So here, let me get started. Uh, and uh, I guess, uh, uh, full disclosure, I have kind of glimpsed, glimpsed at the question so that I can at least verify it's not a question I've done on recording before, but I haven't had a lot of time to rework it out. So this will be a genuine demonstration. Uh, hopefully I didn't forget anything. So I'm gonna start, it's 12.09, so I have a, until about 12.29. So uh, this instruction, same as before. So this uh, oh, it's got two scroll bars. This is the question. It says, consider the setup drone a mass attached, right? Um, and here, um, if the image somehow didn't show, I think this would all this basically describes it fully. So uh, by alt tag, this is what I mean. When you right click on the image and do something like inspect. Um, it this is the alt tag. Uh, it says a decorative diagram <laughs> illustrating the setup as described in the question. Um, if in cases of questions where the question itself didn't describe the figure fully, it would uh, um, it, it would uh, uh, describe the figure fully in that alt tag. Uh, so, okay, so I have this figure. Uh, I got three strings. Uh, Let's let me support, yeah. Um, okay. For each of the questions below, right. So I'm gonna, uh, so for part A, let me uh, draw the free body diagram and then I will write out a description for the answer portion. So um, let's see here. So I need a free body diagram for the mass M. That's I think surprisingly, well, maybe not surprisingly, that's simple uh, for the mass M. Well, um, there should be gravity on it. So there's mg pulling it down. And there's only one thing that's attached here. So there's a tension force, T3, pulling it up. I think that's it. No other <laughs> forces or things to consider. Um, I think the interesting features are in the free body diagram for the point P. Now, for the point P, I guess you have to think through it a little bit and I guess realize that the mass of this point is negligible, so there isn't really going to be gravity on it. Um, there is a downward force on the P, point P, that's the tension T3, if you want, the action-reaction pair between these two. And then there's the tension T1 to the left and tension T2 in the direction that they describe. Um, so, so this is the um, uh, work that I'll be attaching. Let me describe the free body for uh, free body diagram for the answer. Uh, for the mass M, there are two forces: uh, gravity mg downward and um, tension T three upward. By the way, um, you can do underscores and whatnot. It's fine. I think. Um, most of the times it's, uh, um, it, it, uh, as long as other people can understand what you mean, I don't mind the details. Uh, for the point P, uh, there are three forces, um, tension T3 downward, um, tension T2 leftward, and tension T1. Oops, uh, that's T1. T2 uh, directed along the string away from point P. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Um, while the hovercraft stands still, what are the tensions um, in terms of given quantity? Right. Um, so here I should be using standard strategy. So let me do this. I'm going to copy and paste. And uh, when you're doing it on paper, um, you can always organize your work later. So I would uh, uh, I would recommend against wasting time, like redrawing things that you don't have to redraw. So I just to, so the, drawing free body diagram, that was step number one. I drew all the forces I thought through and made sure I didn't forget any forces. Step number two, I need to uh, define my coordinate axis. Um, so it says hovercraft stands still. So I'm dealing with a situation where acceleration is zero. That means I can choose my coordinate freely. 
um, and, and I use that freedom to simplify my equations. And I think here the simplest is for the uh, mass m, I'm really just dealing with this direction. So I could say, oh, this is my plus x and the other is minus x. And here, I think just the regular straight axis will be the simplest. Uh, doesn't cause any unnecessary <laughs> confusion. <laughs> so, okay, so step number two is done. I drew my uh, coordinate axis, minding the direction of acceleration. And step number three, I need to uh, break down forces into components. I have only one force that needs to be broken down. That's my T2 up there into X and Y component. And as I'm breaking it down, I kind of work through the geometry to see that theta is this theta here. So this uh, X component is going to be 2T cosine theta because it's the adjacent side of the angle. And this will be T2 sine theta because it's the opposite side of the angle. That's a step number three. Finally, step number four. I can finally ready to write uh, my Newton's second law equations. So let me write those down. Um, so if you've completed the steps one through three fully, then you, you should be basically at a stage where you can just uh, copy the information from the diagram. So in the free body diagram for the mass, I see these two forces. So I say my uh, acceleration of the mass, which is zero, is given by the net force T3 minus mg divided by uh, the mass m. For the um, for the free body, from the free body diagram of the point, um, and this is where you do have to be a little bit careful. Even though I'm treating the po uh, point P as practically massless, just so that you don't divide by zero, you should treat it as if uh, it has an infinitesimal mass, a small m. <laughs> so I'm going to write the equation that way. So I have um, the acceleration is still zero. Uh, and, and let me write down the x direction first. So zero is equal to the net force. That's the x component of T2. T2 cosine theta minus the x component or the entirety of T1. And T3 has no x component. So all of that divided by m will give me the x. Uh, so this was mass m. This is the point Px. And finally, point Py is going to give me zero acceleration again. And then y components, t2 sine theta. Uh, and t1 has no y component, but I have t3. So minus t3 divided by m. And for both of these, what I would imagine doing, especially for this case where we're going to say small m mass goes to zero, we're going to imagine multiplying this whole thing by m so that you get uh, this is a set of equations you have. Um, in, in fact, I think I'm going to imagine multiplying this by m as well. Because on the left-hand side is 0. In that case, um, the fractions are just annoying me. Um, so I have 0 is equal to t3 minus mg. Here I have 0 is equal to t2 cosine theta minus t1. And I have 0 is equal to t2 sine theta minus t3. So I have one, two, three equations, and oh, three unknowns, the three tensions. So it should be solvable, doable. And uh, it looks like, so I can solve for t3 pretty simply from equation one. So let me do that. I'm just going to do that in my head. t3 is equal to m times g. Um, we do that T3, I can imagine plugging that in here. And I think this equation is simple enough that I can solve it in my head. I'm going to solve it for T2, which is uh, T2 is equal to m times g plugging in T3 divided by sine theta. Um, and from equation 2, uh, plugging in T2 or imagining doing that, T1 is going to be equal to, well, T2 times uh, cosine theta, uh, which is um, m times g divided by, uh, so, you know, cosine over sine or 1 over sine over cosine, that's 1 over tangent theta.
So, so yeah, in terms of answers, this is all that's needed. And I'm going to be attaching this as my work with that label for A replaced with the label for B. So, all right, how am I doing time-wise? I think this question used to be long, uh, longer and I simplified it a little bit. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna now say it's accelerating upward. Um, so that'll change some of the stuff. So let me just copy this and again with the, the note that when you're doing this, don't worry about organizing your work within the time limit. Uh, focus on getting the answers first. So um, I'm just going to start out with the, the version of this and then just uh, modify it uh, to match the uh, change that's given. So uh, it says the hovercraft accelerates upward. Um, so now it's going to have upward acceleration. And I think the thing I like about upward acceleration is as you look at this figure, if it's accelerating upward, um, nothing really has to change. Um, the shape of these all can be just uh, maintained as it is. And, uh, and I think uh, I can just change the magnitudes of the tensions to get that upward acceleration. So nothing in the free body diagram has to change. And so I'm just gonna keep it that way. Um, so here, you know, now we have upward acceleration, but I can get that with the two forces still. So let me keep it that way. And here, um, yeah, I have upward acceleration. So I think what it'll have to be is T2 will have to be, get bigger. And that would have meant T1 has to get bigger and yeah, so I think I can make it work. So, so okay, I need to modify my equations. Uh, le let me do it this way so I don't confuse myself. I'm just gonna erase all this. I have a feeling that once I modify equation, it'll be modified enough that I wanna do something different for uh, writing my system of equations. So instead of having zero acceleration, now that was, there's an upward acceleration. And um, with the point, I do have to be a little bit careful. Let me do it this way. So let me put in the acceleration first. So in along the X component, it's a zero, it adds up to zero. But along the Y component, there is an acceleration, but it's going to end up being that this will eventually go to zero. But let me do the mathematically proper thing for that. Um, so that I don't uh, confuse people unnecessarily. Uh, so, okay, I think uh, with these two changes, um, I should be able to use this for solving for part C. So I'm going to say my, um, I'm gonna do the same thing, multiply through by M, so that my uh, first equation is big M times A is equal to T3 minus MG. And let me rewrite these two equations. Uh, I have from this equation, uh, zero times m is still zero. Is this equal to t2 cosine theta minus t1? And this equation, I want to be careful because it is, after I multiply through by m, it is going to be small m times acceleration is equal to t2 sine theta minus t3. But if you just to proceed with this, you're going to run into an issue because you don't know the amount of small mass m, the mass of point p. And what you really wanted to say, and what I've said out loud before, is you want to take the limit that small mass m goes to zero. It's an infinitesimal amount of mass. So uh, with the limit, the left-hand side simply becomes zero because your acceleration, whatever it is, it's not infinity, it's a finite. So zero times something finite is zero. So here it, my equation is zero is equal to all that. So good, I have one, two, three equations. That's my standard strategy, step number four. Um, <laughs> I borrowed some of the work for steps uh, one through three that was already done before. And I think that's it. And I still have a three, do I have three unknowns? Yeah, I think we are treating acceleration as given. So I still have three unknowns, the three tensions. So I have tensions T1, T2, and T3. So let's go solve for it. Uh, I'll guess I'll solve for T3 again. It's uh, easy out of equation one. T3 is equal to M 
uh, well, you can do this like a factorial simplify, but you also don't have to. I can do m times a plus m times g. Um, plugging that, uh, maybe okay, I have five minutes. Let me just to write out the rest of the algebra by hand so that I don't make mistakes. Uh, so I'm going to plug in the t3 into the equation number three. And doing that gets me 0 is equal to t2 sine theta minus m a plus m g. I need to solve for t2. So t2 is equal to moving this over, dividing through by sine theta. I have m a plus m g divided by sine theta. Let me type that in. Uh, t2 is equal to uh, m times a plus m times g divided by sine theta. Looks like I think, uh, yeah, so all my answers are basically um, wherever I see g replace the re replace with the g plus a, I think. Let me write out equation from equation number two. So I have the zero is equal to, I have this t2 here, so m a plus m g over sine theta times cosine theta minus t1. So solving for t1, um, again, cosine over sine is 1 over tangent theta. So t1 is equal to m a plus m g. Yeah, I think that's, um, yeah, it's not so complicated. And I think it's meant to be. Uh, this question used to be longer. There used to be a, I don't think I have done any review question on this review video on this question. There used to be a fourth part where it's accelerating horizontally and um, that turned out to be too long of a question. You can see that uh, I uh, you know, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I can work through these questions pretty fast and I still only have uh, less than four minutes left. So, um, so yeah, it's a um, kind of a basic uh, Newton's uh, uh, Newton's law strategy application question. Uh, we start with the static equilibrium, which uh, you've done in some of the homework questions, and uh, just to modify it a little bit to make sure that you know how to continue to apply the same strategy when there is an acceleration. So, okay, I think I can, um, I probably have enough time to add work. Yeah, so let me do that. Uh, gonna add work. And somehow, if you, you know, when you are doing this, if you don't have enough time, uh, just uh, system will submit it for you when the 20 minutes runs out and then um, feel free to attach work later you can um, you can do it uh, you can take some time to organize um, the only thing that I would ask you to avoid and be careful not to do is even when you're putting together work you are not allowed to use outside help any outside help when you're doing this is uh, academic dishonesty so as long as you are not receiving outside help, you can take additional time. Um, that's why the, uh, putting the answers in within the time limit is important. Your answer within the 20 minute time limit anchors what you did for that 20 minutes to the work that you could be submitting an hour from when you're done. So, um, yeah. And I think I have mentioned, uh, talked about how important it is. If, if you somehow didn't finish everything, at least to put in some partial answers so that as I look at your work later, I um, I can kind of connect to, okay, this portion was done within 20 minutes and the other portion you needed more time or whatever. So I think that's all. Um, let me just submit an end. Uh, I didn't miss anything. And you know, these are all manually graded, I so think. Yeah, so those are my answers. I can still edit my work if I want to. Let me do save work and continue. Now, somehow if you didn't attach your work at this stage, and sometimes I think if you're doing this close to midnight, you might get kicked out from the system when the time limit runs, the, the deadline approaches. Now, you can still attach your work after the deadline has uh, come and gone without using any late pass, um, but if you go into this screen, you will be at a screen where you can only oops, uh, wrong thing. You can only view your work, not change any of it. Um, so in order to change your work, the screen you need to be at is you know refresh this 
or you know access the module page again and you see this button here that's the uh, that gets you to the menu item where you can uh, change your work not your answers that's locked in but you should be able to change your work um, and uh, so right now it's uh, before the due time so i don't see any answer key and um, <laughs> and uh, i can't uh, verify that you have this add work button after the due date runs up but i'm like 99 percent sure that you still have access to this after uh after midnight so if you've already done the attempt submitted an answer and let's say tomorrow morning as you wake up you realize you made a mistake and you want to fix it uh, as long as i haven't graded it yet you can to add work, change your work. Um, it does leave a, there's a timestamp. I think the timestamp shows up here. So, I mean, the system does indicate when the work was last changed. Um, most of the time, I, I don't mind, um, as long as this wasn't changed after I graded the thing, I don't really care that much. So, okay, so that's uh, one question for the uh, part one of the freeform timed assessment. Pardon briefly for any questions. If there aren't any, let me uh, go to part uh, two. Oh, yeah. Real quick. Sorry. Did Why did you take the limit? Uh, so it wasn't... There are different ways you can go about it. Um, what it's... Uh, the idea that's expressed here is that... Uh, this is really the conceptually the important thing. Uh, mass of point... P is infinitesimally small. So when you you can handle that at the step when you are write, uh, writing down Newton's second law equation, if you are writing down net force is equal to mass times acceleration, uh, then you might say, oh, mass is zero. So you just say it's equal to zero. That's certainly doable and possible. Um, the only reason I felt like I had to go through this complicated route is, well, I'm dividing by n, and I'm not allowed to say the number I'm dividing by is zero. So I want you to first have an algebraic expression, mass times acceleration, and that this limit is just me saying in mathematical language what's in English here. The point P has basically no mass. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it, I'm not expecting, like, you didn't have to go through this. I'm, this uh, complication only comes in because I'm doing this division by M where I don't want M to be zero. Yeah. 